The Shimshire Shorja Festival makes a welcome return to Swinford following the pandemic. A reception was held here in the White House Bar in the town to announce details of this year's festival programme. You're the Secretary and Coordinator of Seamus uh, Shaw. You've been involved in this many, many years now, haven't you? Too many ma n years to just name them, but uh, I'm delighted that I got involved. A group of youngsters started Seamus Shaw, and after about two or three years, I was really seeing that there was something good here, that we could really have a good festival in Swinford. And I said, I'm definitely going to make a five day festival out of it. And I literally grabbed it and um, it was like grabbing a nettle. And it has been very successful and very, we've stood the test of time, as you know. And uh, we've had great community backing, like in the town. Swinford is a very decent town to live in and to work in and also to run a festival in because people see the value of anything that any voluntary worker does. And that's very important as well, you know? Now, of course, the pandemic came and that must have been a big blow for, for the Festival Committee and indeed for the people of Swinford not to have the festival for a couple of years. Well, you see, in 2019, we had the 35th anniversary of Shimsa Shroja and we had a fabulous program for that. And then came the, the COVID uh, epidemic and we absolutely lost all our steam, all our interest, uh, all our following, all lots of money as well. But at the same time, you know, it gave us a rest, but not a want of rest, to be honest with you. So people know that it's getting on the way now at the end of July, 29th July is the opening night and right through the August we get. Now I know it attracts a lot of people and this year's festival is very much community based and of course the diaspora. Yeah, well the, the community element of Swinford is probably the reason why Sheem Sashroja has stood the test of time. It's because the business people have been pretty decent to us. It's also other organizations have come in with imagination and with imaginative things to put on our program. And of course, our committee themselves have a, a, an, an absolute density of information about running a festival as well. We're very keen on keeping the festival going. I cannot see Shim Sashraja ever dying in my time, I hope. No. Uh, we have a great community and this year a lot of the organizations have come in and they've decided to put on events, all kinds of events, uh, athletic events, um, cultural events, um, music events, dance events, uh, street runs, everything you could possibly think of as on our program. I'm very proud of it actually. And we only started organizing this in the 14th of May. So you can imagine what it's like to produce a program like we've done here tonight. And uh, of course, one of the big attractions of Shim Shorja is the free entertainment on the streets, particularly the big bands playing mm -hmm. on the big stage at night time. Yeah, well, the element of free entertainment is probably the greatest element we have in the program. Um, in fact, I would say 80% of, of the entertainment is free. It's between free on the streets or free maybe sometimes in the music tent outside Mellets, which is a fantastic event. Um, you know, we have Michael English, of course, as you know. We have the Conquerors. We have several other smaller bands there, but nonetheless, we have um, After Eights. We have uh, some crowd called with Socks. Uh, we have the, the Malloy brothers, we have Matt Cunningham of course for Crossroads Cayley on the street and uh, we'll have some good Irish dancers there and old time dancers as well which appeals very much to um, the diaspora and people who come back. The Heritage Day is also very popular isn't it at the festival? Well I mean that's that's the day we have the Crossroads Cayley and all the music on the street as well. Um, I was delighted this morning when I was out on the street to have met somebody who has already come from, from England and she says, Bridge, I absolutely, my, my, I'm absolutely looking forward to Shim Sashraja. The number of people who come and um, enjoy the ordinary, lit, the ordinary small events that we have and they meet one another, you know, they, they have the crack and uh, the pubs are excellent in Swinford as well as you know. Tom, you were one of the founding members of Shreem Shishra, you're going back all those years ago, 38 years ago. Did you honestly think it would last this long? 
never in my wildest dreams, Henry. It was sort of a, a pilot dream of uh, three or four kids and uh, myself, John O'Connell, John McIntyre, and then those Kevin Hennigan, um, Eugene Owens, and Father Greg Hannon as part of the group and came up with an idea that we had the August Fair in Swimford. It was always very busy. It's a busy time of year. And we thought if we could provide some sort of entertainment, because at the time you had, we said the likes of the Western Rose Festival going on, the Balna Festival, Westport Festivals, we had nothing in Swinford. So we thought, why not have it in Swinford? And as a business person in Swinford here for many years now, how important is the festival for the likes of people like you in, oh. in business? It's vitally important. It's the flagship event that Swinford has every year. We have the best day, the best weekend of the year, the August Bank Holiday Monday, and that's signal for Swinford as their flagship event. In the whole of Ireland, there's no better weekend to have any festival and Swinford have the, the rights to that. And so we always start the weekend of the bank holiday and we finish on the August bank holiday fair then. So it's it's vital to the, the business people of the town because for basically a month before the festival and afterwards, people are talking about Swinford. It's all good news about Swinford, it's good vibes about Swinford and it brings people back to Swinford to see again. They'll come for the festival, but they'll come back afterwards to shop. So it's very good. Well, we spoke about uh, some of the entertainment that people can look forward to at the festival, but there's many other things happening, particularly from a historical point of view as well. Yeah, well, you see, we have a great history in Swinford and great um, historians this year. Unfortunately, Michael Comer is a great uh, friend of Shreem Sussraj, and he always did a historical walk around the towns of Swinford on the bank called Monday. He sadly passed away, and we're very sorry, and we miss him, sadly, within the committee. He was all great support. So we have a commemorative morning on Monday morning, the Bank Holiday Monday early, and we have a talk in the hotel. And then on Monday night, another historical group, um, Super Kyotas, are putting on a history of the Moy, the winding of the Moy is called, which is a, a story of song and music and literature, and stories about the Moy where it rose at its source and where it enters the sea. And you're very involved with the Shimsha uh, Festival. And this year you come up with a great idea and you're going nurturing some talents in the area. That's correct. We opened our applications for a new talent show we're running here in Swinford, hoping to have it as a new community event. So we opened our applications on the 3rd of June and they closed on the 1st of July and we had a huge response. And the amount of talent that we have coming in is just going to be absolutely phenomenal. So everybody should come along and see what we have to offer on the night. So it's, uh, the talent show is open to all genres of music, all yeah. artists, professionals, semi-professional, amateurs, whatever. Yes, that's correct. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to leave it open to all ages because of the fact there's young children out there that are afraid to perform, that have amazing talent. But there's also adults out there that are in the same boat that have been hiding these talents away for a long time. So that's why we decided to leave it open to anybody. And we've had a few surprise people come and get in, get involved. So when does it actually happen? So our live final is taking place in the Gateway Hotel at nine o'clock on the 29th of July. Which is the opening night. Of the the opening night of the festival as well. Yeah, okay. And for the winners? So first place will receive a cash prize of 300 euros, a perpetual shield, which has been sponsored, very kindly sponsored by O'Brien's Hackney Service in Midfield. And they will also get a trophy that they get to keep. Second place receives 200 euros and a trophy, and third place is 100 euros and a trophy. And I believe the winners could actually be making an appearance at the festival as well on the big stage. That's correct. See, as it stands at the minute, we don't actually know who's going to win, but we're giving our winner an opportunity to perform live at Chimpsa. So it's kind of a launching platform for them to get themselves known and get themselves out there. And is, is this going to be something that's going to become an annual event and be part of the Sheemsh and Shroji Festival every year? Well, that, that's our plan. That's our main ambition. But we're going to try and get through this year now and see how we get yeah. on before we go. But yes, hopefully we'd love to run it as an annual event. Councillor Jerry Murray, lovely to see you here at the launch of Sheemsh and Shroji. And of course, you've been a tremendous supporter of the festival uh, over the years. Indeed, Jan. Your kind of councils as well have uh, supported the festival financially as well. And it's great to see it back after the two years of COVID and uh, a return to uh, normality and that uh, the Irish diaspora can travel back to Ireland and uh, experience all of the festivals, the activities, the cultural activity, the sporting activity. So there's a lot to, there's a lot to be said for getting back to uh, a normal way of living. How important are these festivals for towns like Swinford, Jerry? Well, all these festivals are help. You know, it's it's the old saying, uh, Irish saying, a little help is worth a lot of pity. And uh, these festivals 
I suppose, first of all, there have been a lot of bed nights and commercial activity to small towns and to East Mayo and South Sligo and uh, West Roscommon. But it's also as well an opportunity for the Irish diaspora to, to connect with their roots, with their relations, with their cousins. And uh, from, a, from a council point of view, I suppose we're always interested to um, meet and encounter the Irish diaspora because uh, a lot of them are involved in significant commercial activity, uh, significant enterprise activity, and the council are always trying to see can we entice some of these people back here and can they make a, make a contribution to the local uh, in, uh, indigenous economy. And I, I'm, I'm happy to report that over the years we have managed to get some investment from that particular sector. So that's the reason why we have the ongoing engagement. Will you get a chance to enjoy the festival? Sure. Oh yeah, there's always various cultural events and we'll come back and uh, there's always a bit of crack, which is which is most important. And people come to obviously meet their friends and relations, but also that unique uh, commodity we call the crack in Ireland. I'm Mary Stenson from uh, Dublin Road, Swinford, but I'm home from England for a week and uh, I come home every year to enjoy the festival and I'm here today to find out what's going to happen uh, in July and, and August and uh, I can't wait to get back and, and my daughter's coming as well and uh, she loves it and she used to always dance on the uh, lorry when she was a, ba a child and uh, um, we really, really enjoy uh, coming. Uh, yes, yes, wouldn't miss it for the world. You're actually performing some nice traditional music here tonight at the launch. Yes, that's right. I was asked to uh, perform a few tunes on the concertina tonight, so I'm delighted to be here uh, for the launch of the Shinsa. Mm. And uh, obviously playing here must bring back memories because you started off your music career actually attending Shimsha and uh, the music at the festival. Yes, so I remember attending the session in Oaks as a little girl and now I'm delighted that I will be teaching at the school Shimsa um, for from the 25th to the 29th of July. So I'll be teaching the concertina to whistle and flute at that. So it's nice to kind of be on the other side this time. And are many people taking up the concertina in particular? Because it's a great traditional instrument. Yeah, so a lot of people usually start off on the tin whistle and then they'd advance to another instrument. So I noticed when I was teaching at the Saturday classes for Swinford Camolthus that um, I actually had quite a big uh, concertina class. So it's great that there's a huge interest in, in the concertina now. And do you look forward to the festival every year? Absolutely, I love listening to the music and attending the session in Oaks and you know it's just lovely, it, it gives you such a lift to uh, have the music and song and dance, it's great, it's great for the town. And you're also, um, you've got a big job now with Coltis in, in Dublin there. You're the National Youth Officer for Coltis Coltis Erin. Yes. I'm How did that come about? Well, um, I, it started off and I got voted for Mayo and then I progressed to Connacht and now I'm the National Youth Officer so I'm thrilled to have gotten that role and I can't wait to get started on it now. So and um, what will that entail like? What will the... um, so I'll be promoting um, music to the youth and I'll be attending FLAS and working at FLAS. Um, Sounds like a great job. <laughs> yeah, it's busy but it's it's good. Yeah. yeah. And is it, would that be your ultimate? Are you going to stay in the traditional music circles? That's going to be your main job in there? Yes, that will be my main job. I'll keep playing music and passing on my skills to younger people. So. Great. Well, we're looking forward to hearing you tonight, for each. Thank you very much. Thank you. All the years that I've known you, uh, nobody has been more passionate about traditional music, uh, particularly here in Swinford, than you have. And I know you are in the heart of the Shimsha Festival every year. Well, I'm very involved in Coltis now. We have an absolutely fantastic Coltis committee here in Swinford. We've had several flag holes and we like to get involved in community events. And we've been involved in the Shimsha for, oh, I can't remember how many years so at this stage. Years. So many years, yes. Yeah. And, and this year, of course, great to see you back. Obviously, you must have missed a Joan Corbett on that, Maureen. We 
did miss it, yes. And we're delighted to be putting on our annual pageant this year uh, on the Monday night, the 1st of August. And what does that entail? Well, that entails that this year our theme is the windings of the Moy. And the ladies are very busy at the moment writing a script and getting ready to do uh, the story of the Moy. The history, the songs, the poems, the music. Um, just generally anything that's interesting about the Moy, right from Sligo right down to the Atlantic. So I, I think it'll be absolutely fantastic. And there's going to be other traditional music sessions throughout the festival as well. There will be traditional music festivals. We have a session in Oak for young people here in the White House on the Sunday. We have music classes in the week before Shimsa. We have what we call Skolkyol Shimsa. This year it's in the VTOS building because the National school are having some works done but we're hopeful that we'll have lots of children and and adults if they're interested. And would you say that um, traditional music and culture is very strong in, Winf in Swinford now? Traditional music and culture is strong in Swinford and a sense of history is very strong in Swinford at the moment and a part, uh, we have singers, dancers, musicians, we have people who are into genealogy, people who are into history. Yeah. Swinford is very interesting that way. Now you're also involved with the railway players. I'm involved with the railway players for my sins. I'm the PRO. <laughs> yes. On top of all the rest. Yeah. We, we. It's a lovely new drama group. We're set up in 2018 and have got involved in everything that we can get involved in since working with other committees in the locality. Um, the railway players were very busy during the flag hole. We had the Connacht flag hole and they dressed up as judges and barristers and helped out in the courthouse. We did a, in 2019, we did a, an all day long music session in the old courthouse and the railway players helped out with that. Uh, we also have done several shows and sketches and we are getting involved in the Shames as well. We have the opening event of Shames is our talent show, which I think is going to be brilliant. And then we're doing a mock wedding on the Tuesday okay, at so one o'clock. Okay, so involved in that then? Well, the mock wedding, we have a script for the main characters, the bride and the groom and one or two others. And then there are a whole load of other characters who will be coming in unscripted. So anything could happen. It could be great fun. Uh, you're over the children's events at yes, the Shimsha Shorja Festival, so what can they look forward to? Well, every year we, on the Sunday we organise a children's event for the 2 to 11 year olds thereabouts just to get them involved as well because a lot of the, the events are organised for the, the adults or the mummies and daddies. So a good few years ago, probably 10 years ago, we said, well, we'd, we'd try something for the children. Now we do puppet shows or uh, magicians, that sort of thing. This year we're going to incorporate the, the workshops that Breeders organised during the during the week they're going to be showcased on the Sunday so from Sunday at two o'clock up in the cultural center there'll be dance uh, dance workshops there'll be the the music and we have a magician and a balloon modeler coming as well and a little bit of background music so hopefully that'll keep them organ uh, entertained. It must be very exciting for the kids something to really look oh, forward lovely. to. It's lovely to see them coming in and the excitement on their faces because we have the room decorated and it's just when they come in and see what's ahead of them they don't really know from year to year because as the years go on the it's a younger generation coming up and coming up so it's it's great it's great to see their faces and we provide my wadi and crisps and things like that just to keep them occupied for a couple of hours so it's great. And, and of course, uh, the, the, growing up then, they have great memories of Seems to show well, I hope so, yeah. It's nice to look back and say, do you remember the Sunday when whoever, the magician or whoever came? And it's kind of nice to, to remember the Shimsa for that as well, as well as all the on-street entertainment as well that will be going on during the week. So that's and good. do children, uh, the parents, their families, do they need to book for this? Uh, no, no, it's a free event. It, it's, it's open to everybody from about two o'clock on Sunday. You just turn up. It's all free. It's all free of charge. Uh, the only thing that we encourage that the parents stay along with the children. That's cool. It's like they don't go off and leave them there because there the generally are an awful lot of children so it's hard to keep them um, kind of contained but the parents enjoy it just as much as the children do you know it's, it's good it's a good day out good so you, you're going to have a very busy day yes I'll be wearing the flats that day <laughs> Lovely. Well, wish you well with it thank you very much Henry thank you I came to Swinford about 16 years ago after living in New York for 21 years. So there's a big change, but I love Swinford. When I come home on holidays, I used to, um, my sister already lived here. So we always had such a good time in Swinford at the bars and 
meeting people and everything. So um, we ended up coming home and um, settling in Swimford, buying a house and settling in Swimford and loving it, loving it ever since. Yeah. What, about you? what do you look forward to in the festival? Um, the fun and the crack, the, everybody enjoying themselves, having fun, um, it's meeting a lot of people that we knew over the years and it's an enjoyable time. The Butterfly Garden, indirectly, it's connected with Seamstress Roy, isn't it? That's right, Henry. Uh, the Butterfly Garden uh, was formed, I suppose, the idea came to fruition maybe uh, two years ago, where a group of bereaved parents um, came together. A, a local lady called Stephanie Maloney came up with the idea of putting a memorial garden together for parents that had lost babies as she had lost her daughter. Um, myself and Sarah and Natasha and a few other mums around the Swinford area um, and even outside the Swinford area came together and uh, decided this was a great idea and that we were going to have an area that we could nearly go to or anybody in the community that has suffered a miscarriage, a stillbirth or a neonatal loss. And I suppose our aim really was that the garden would be somewhere that you could sit and reflect mm. and um, always remember your child. Lovely. And so where exactly this garden? It's a sensory garden as well, is it? Yeah, so it's um, located beside the playground in Swinford, um, so um, it'll be very, it'll, it'll be a lovely space for families to go on the on the birthday of the child, um, and then the the other kids can go um, with the parents, uh, and it'll be lovely to they'll be able to have lunch and everything at the the little bench in the butterfly garden. Um, yeah, yeah, now it's not officially opened yet, sure it's not? No, the garden won't be opening until uh, Monday of the Shims Shroud, which is the 1st of August at 2pm. Um, and we are officially going to open the garden ourselves because we feel we've put a lot of work into it and um, we'll have a few little surprises on the day. But um, we're inviting all the community or anybody that helped participate, um, I suppose, to put the garden together to come and help us. There's lots of things to do and see in it. There's a mosaic, there's a butterfly bench, there's uh, stone butterflies in the ground. Um, it's not so much a sensory garden, but there is a pathway area and lots of wildlife flowers. Really, it's a woodland garden because it's in a woodland setting. We're absolutely thrilled to bring this amenity to Swinford Town. Sarah, the, this is a very unique garden. There isn't another one of its kind in Mayo. Yeah, so it's the first um, of its kind in Mayo. Um, so it'll be a lovely place for everybody to come. Um, and reflect um, for anybody who's lost a baby or their families of um, people who've lost a baby as well. And then it'll be lovely for the community to come as well. Yeah, so it's, it's open to everybody, isn't it? Yeah. When it does open. Yeah. Yes, it'll be open to everybody. It'll be part of the walkway through the fairy trail and up through the forest. Um, we decided to call it the Butterfly Garden, um, I suppose, because... Well, we like the, the, I suppose, the connection of um, uh, how a caterpillar forms into a butterfly and rebirth. And we like to think of our babies that they're now released and gone to a better place. Well, look, we wish you well with it and uh, good luck with the official opening of it uh, during the Sheem Shashard Festival. It's wonderful. Thanks so much. Visitors can look forward to an action-packed programme of events. Details on your screen now.